We're glad you've tuned in today to the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone. Megan Mozak back in the studio with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. Kirk and Paul, they are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we're going to be telling you throughout the show about courses that are held and sponsored by the foundation that you're going to want to attend. If you're near retirement, if you're newly retired, maybe it's on your radar you want to be at these courses. This could mean the difference between a successful and an unsuccessful retirement. And this is going to be a great show as we dive into a big topic today. Uh, this is just one of the many topics that are covered at these courses. And we'll be telling you much more about that throughout the program. So great to be back with Kirk and with Paul today. And we want to discuss an interview process. You all might be wondering, well, Megan, if we're talking about retirement, why would we be interviewing? This is a different kind of interview. This is interviewing who is going to help you get to and through retirement, who is going to be your financial guru, your guide, and your retirement planner. And there are some very important questions to ask. And Kirk and Paul, I'm excited to dive into this one. I'm taking notes. Love it. Looking forward to it, Megan. What do you want to be thinking about when you start to sit down with someone and you're thinking about taking what you've saved, this nest egg, and making it last for your whole retirement? So this is a topic, probably one of my more favorite parts of the class. So towards the end of the class, we spent about an hour breaking down how do you interview? How do you choose your team? How do you choose your advisors, your CPAs, your attorneys? How do you choose that team? And what's the most effective way to approach it? And so one of the things that we provide is sort of a list of interview questions that you should be asking and specific topics you should be asking your advisor to test their knowledge and ability specific to retirement. I think that's going to be the biggest surprise of today's show is that well, unfortunately for many of you, the people that have helped you accumulate your wealth to get you to this point in your life, and it's done a great job. I mean, many of your advisors have done great jobs for you. Many of you yourself have done great jobs for yourself. But retirement planning is a very different ballgame. You don't just have two levers to pull now. It's not just how much I save and then how much, what to invest in. It's, uh, it, there are, a lot, 10, 20, 30 different levers you have to be focused on in retirement. It really is a subspecialty, just like medicine has subspecialists. Like you go from a, a, pedi a pediatrician to a general practitioner to an internist, then to your surgeons, your general surgeons, your orthopedics. This isn't general surgery anymore, folks. This is a specialty, retirement planning. And we're going to talk about specific things that you're going to be able to ask the people you're interviewing or working with to see if they have the knowledge to handle this for you. Yeah, you know, Kirk, this topic popped in my head over the weekend. If I can just share a quick story. I was, I was uh, having dinner with a friend who recently retired, and they're not happy. There are a lot of anxiety, as you can imagine, given market conditions. And I asked them, when you sat down with your advisor, did you ask them this? Did you ask them that? And I walked through a series of questions. They didn't ask any of these questions, not one. And I realized they just assumed because this was their advisor while they were accumulating their life, they would naturally transition to being their advisor in retirement and never really question them on the things today we're going to talk about. That's what made me think it. It's just incredibly important to understand there's a big difference between the advisor you had helping you accumulate your wealth and the advisor you need helping you get through retirement. Paul, one of the things that I'll promise, I'll guarantee if if and when you attend one of our eight-hour courses, that you will walk away recognizing you need to find someone who is focused exclusively on the retirement phase of your life if you're going to do this right. Now, look, if you're the average baby boomer with $250,000 saved for retirement, less of a factor. But if you're that one to $10 million household, you need to find the right team to help you. And it begins by educating yourself. And it's why for over a decade, our charity that we founded over a decade, almost 13 years ago, is totally dedicated on educating people within 10 years of retirement through retirement. These are eight-hour courses that are held at major universities. And if you'd like to register, you should go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You know, Kirk, it's interesting. Every time, the, you know, we teach the class and you get to this set section, you know, you can always tell 
people are a little surprised by this topic. I don't think people expect that we are going to teach them how to find an advisor. And it, you always see that they're taking notes during this section. And I think the reason being is, is that most people, I don't mean that's no disrespect, are somewhat clueless as to understanding what they should look for in an advisor. They just assume, well, they understand, you know, if they understand investments, that's good enough, right? And obviously, as we're going to talk about today, that's, there are a lot more things you need to understand when you pick your advisor. It, 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 Paul, you said, I, I love that you brought up the word investment because that's what everyone's focused on. They're, they're, in, in, in what people learn through this, it's like a master's level course that we're teaching at major universities around Michigan, now Missouri, major universities. There's a reason why these are in university settings. It's because it's really advanced planning. And what they assume, they assume is what you invest in will drive your success in retirement. And that is not at all, at all what's going to drive your success in retirement. You are no longer worried about the accumulation of your wealth, growing your wealth. It's now about the distribution of your wealth, which we'll discuss. But the distribution of your wealth, what drives performance in retirement? isn't what you invest in, but it's your income planning, where you're going to take your income from during different market conditions, eliminating the biggest risk to your retirement, which is sequence of returns risk. But, so look, folks, this course is taught by a national charity. We have people that are in the financial service industry, including CPAs, attorneys, CFPs, um, people who manage money, who are leading as the instructors of this course. And the purpose of this course is to give you the knowledge, the tools to understand all the different levers that are needed to be pulled and controlled throughout a 25, 30 year retirement. And it's not focused just on the, certainly we're going to talk about investments in the class, but it is so much more comprehensive. It's about income tax planning, sync, managing sequence of returns risk, and how you choose an advisor is where you start. So attend an eight-hour course taught at all the major universities in your area. If you'd like to register, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back much more straight ahead with Kirk and Paul. Don't miss it. Always a pleasure to be back in the studio with financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. Such a great show topic for you today. and We're glad you're tuned in listening. We're going to get back to it in just a moment. Also want to remind you as you're listening today, you do have the option to re-listen to this show. You could even share it with a friend. We have all of our shows stored in a library of podcasts, and you can access these wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Just search for the name of the show, which is, of course, Retirement Education Hour. Want to remind you, there is time to get registered today, and we want you to take action to get registered for the Retirement Education Foundation's courses. These are like master's level courses on retirement planning. Two choices. You could do a, a one day course or a two day course. These are held at major colleges and universities wherever you're listening today. So if you're in Michigan today, these are held at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both campuses there, Novi or Troy, or Oakland University. And in the state of Missouri, you can attend at the University of Missouri or Columbia College. Want to point you to the website? Visit that today. Get more details, find a date and a location that works best for you at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also use the phone number to get registered, 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. By the way, when you go and find this show, uh, wherever you find your podcast, be sure to subscribe, then you won't miss any. All right, I want to get back to the topic at hand today. Kirk, Paul, we're discussing interviewing a financial advisor for retirement planning. But the big question I have is, why should I be interviewing them to make sure that they're a good fit? Shouldn't they know what they need to do for me? Megan, that is probably the 
for some people, the million dollar question, some other people, five million and others, $10 million question, right? So it's helpful. And so we promise as we get into the show, we're going to give you specific questions you're going to need to be asking when you're interviewing for your team, your advisor, CPA attorney. We promise we're going to help you with that. But you first need to understand why you need to be proactively doing this. Why Why would I, and Megan, you nail it. Why would I need to interview and ask advisors to figure out if they're going to do what's best for me? And it's not just about what's best for me. Look, the bottom line, think about it this way. The less money you spend, the less of your own money you spend, the more your advisors make. You have to, at the core, understand There is no incentive to teach you to spend more money in retirement. They're incentivized, in fact, to create fear, doubt, and worry. Now, I know that's pretty harsh, but the fact is the way that they are compensated is based upon the amount of your money they're managing. And if they convince you to spend more money, in other words, if they convince you to do a controlled spend down of your principal, as long as you don't outlive your 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 income, it, it, that means they are depleting their own money, their own income by having you spend down your money. So our fear and what we teach in our class, our fear for you in retirement isn't that you're going to outlive your money. Most of the people attending our courses, it's about they're going to underspend what they otherwise should and could be spending, that they're going to work longer than they need to, that they're going to pay a lot more in taxes than they should. Because there is no incentive for the financial service industry to teach you to spend more money. In Paul, I know we'll talk about it, but then there's the second piece is it's also more profitable to not do some of the things we're going to teach you that they should be doing. Is that fair? Yeah, I think it's totally fair. I mean, I think what you're saying, and I think you know we see this when we meet people in the class all the time, is I think consumers, you listen, people listening, you assume that your interests and your advisor's interests are aligned and they're not, right? You are assuming that when you go to a professional, just like you go to a specialist, they know what to do to make sure you get everything you need. The problem is their interests and your interests are not always the same. And, you know, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna couch it. They're going to couch it that this is best for you. But you have to remember that there's a lot of self-interest in the things they're recommending and one of them is, is that, the, you know, they don't want you to spend all your money because they make more. So they're not necessarily helping you spend the most and get the most out of your retirement. And, you know, it, 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 part of the problem is you don't know what you don't know, which is why I think this topic is so important. People don't know what to ask. People don't know how to interview your advisor. People assume they don't need to know it. And, and I think getting into the question we're going to get into will be very helpful. Paul, you know, I want to be fair. I think that there are a great deal of people in the financial service industry, like you said, they also don't know what they don't know. And so what they do is they echo and follow what they've been trained to do. There are some people that are guilty that are, they understand that they could provide more income and more help for their clients and they're choosing not to. There's some, there's some not great advisors out there, but I think there's a lot of probably pretty good people out there that are just, they've been hired, they've been good, they're good salespeople. And so they are just taught what to do and what the industry norm is. And the industry norm, Paul, is to create these one size fits all solutions. And why would they teach and create general rules? And and there's a million of them. There's the 4% rule. There's conventional wisdom on how and when to take money out of your accounts. There are these software programs like eMoney and Money Guide Pro that are really just probability of success studies, not anything that really teaches people to spend more of their money to make sure they don't outlive their money. You understand the more cookie cutter scalable they make the process, the more profitable their companies are. The financial service industry is. That's why they came up with these general rules. And so, you know, that 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 fancy plan that someone gave you, which is an e-money, Money Guy Pro, a right capital software, it's just software or they've private labeled the software where they had an intern put your information into a computer and it spits out the 4% rule and shows you the likelihood of whether you're going to outlive your money or not with a dial and then with charts. It's basically saying the same things in 30 or 40 different pages. That isn't a plan. So we're going to teach you today 
specific questions to ask, and then hopefully convince you that you need more education and you're going to attend one of our like master's level courses in university setting. So you're informed enough to know whether the person helping you is really doing planning or not. What does a real retirement plan look like? That's what we teach in the course. Hell, we teach that on our, on our, on the charity's website. We've done a webinar. What a sample, what a real retirement plan should look like. And you're going to learn you have nothing like that. And if you had that, you can spend six, seven, eight percent in withdrawal rates in retirement. You'll pay less taxes. Just do yourself a favor. Sign up. Register for one of our eight-hour classes. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Great to be here with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. Hi, everyone. Megan Mozak in. So pleased you've tuned in today. This is the Retirement Education Hour. It's a great time for you to get a download of some of the biggest topics that are facing you as a retiree, a soon-to-be retiree. We really want you to be educated. That is the goal of the Retirement Education Foundation. And speaking of that foundation, we want to make sure you're signed up for the foundation's courses. These are deep dives into retirement planning, really like a master's level course on retirement planning. And these are held at major colleges and universities right in your community. We make this easy for you to get registered, to get that front row seat. We want to see you there. You can meet financial instructors like Kirk and Paul. Here's how you register. Go to the website. It's retirementplanningedu.org. That website, again, is retirementplanningedu.org. The phone number, if you'd like to call to register, is 800-240-8981. 800-240-8981. If you're in Michigan listening today, these courses are held at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, Oakland University, another option for you in the state of Michigan. If you're listening today from the state of Missouri, these are held at the University of Missouri, also at Columbia College. And if you go to that website, you're going to find a complete list of locations, dates, and times. Find one that works for you. Also want to mention, speaking of Missouri, that the Retirement Education Foundation, they are proud partners of Mizzou Athletics. Now, this program, great show for you today. We've been diving into how to interview for your correct fit for a retirement planner. I want you to keep in mind, if you missed anything at the beginning of the show or you want to listen again, you can do that. Find this program wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. All right, we're going to get down to some actionable items here, Kirk and Paul. When we're interviewing financial advisors for retirement planning, what are some of the questions we should be asking them? Well, the first question you need to ask is around income planning. Okay, so everyone's going to try to talk to you about the investments you should invest in, the annuities you should in buy, and rates of return, historical rates of return, some future rates of returns, which, you know, it's ironic. If you all just go to our charity's website, and go look at the sample plan. We spend, we do a 30, 40 minute webinar walking you through what a real retirement plan should look like, a sample plan. What you'll notice on that plan is we're using a projected around three, a little over 3% growth rate over their entire lifetime. But that plan shows a 65 year old with $2 million saved, creating $160,000 of income per year. So, we are showing distributions of 8% per year, starting at 65 years old, 8% a year increasing over their lifetime at 65 years old, but only using a 3% projected growth rate on all the investments. And there is a zero chance of outliving your income. That is a bulletproof plan. Walk through the sample. You'll hear why you will never outlive your income. There's long-term care protections. Everything's there. The reason why is instead of just being focused on investments and growth rates, it's you got to focus on your income planning. And what is going to drive success in retirement is managing something called sequence of returns risk. That is the number one risk to your retirement plan, which, by the way, if you go to our website, we have white papers and interactive calculators explaining to you sequence of returns risk. That is the number one risk. And essentially what we're trying to do, Paul, 
and I'll let you elaborate, is all we're going to do is instead of market timing investments, we market time income. We just pivot to different accounts depending on the market conditions, which are totally unpredictable. So we know it's going to go up and down throughout retirement, four to seven major market events. So when we have bad market events, we're going to pivot and pull money from the right accounts, not the wrong accounts. So growth rate becomes less of a factor in driving success, but income planning is the 100% driver of success in retirement, Paul. Yes. Yeah, so so I, th I think if we get back to, so the question, you know, what should these people be asking their advisor? I think the first question you're saying is, okay, how are you advisor going to manage sequence of returns risk? How are you going to allow me to take the money I want without any risk that I'm going to be in trouble later in my life if we have market corrections? And the one thing I would say is, if the answer is we'll go to cash, or if the answer is you'll spend less when we have a recession, those are bad answers, right? We don't want to spend less because they don't want to do their job, right? You want to live your life in retirement and enjoy it regardless of the market. So those should not be answers. So you want to know what are they going to do? How are they going to create pivot accounts? What are they going to do when the market crashes to make sure? And, and, and if they say, well, we have this Monte Carlo simulation, nurse, don't worry. You have an 80% chance of success. That's not an answer either, is it, Kirk? It's not, Paul. So what they're going to say is, well, we got a special portfolio. It's, you know, we've built in algorithms to reduce standard deviation, to reduce the volatility of the portfolio, blah, 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 blah. Sorry. It's all garbage. It's nonsense. The value proposition that the financial service industry only sells is that they can manage money better than you can or better than the index. And the answer, that's not true. They're not better. No one is better. Like nobody. Come to the class and we'll give you the data. There's not been one money manager that has been able to stay in the top quartile for five consecutive years. 40% of all mutual funds fail after 10 years. Actively managed mutual funds are performing at 3.98% over the last 30 years. And the index is performing at over 10%. Literally, all you had to do is put a million dollars in the S&P 500 over uh, uh, 20 years ago, and you'd have over six and a half million dollars today. They're lying. It's not true. It's, that's not what's going to drive your success in retirement. It's not what you invest in or how you manage a portfolio. That's garbage. It's not true. That's why they tell you you got to protect your principal, like Paul said, protect your principal and spend less during times of market volatility. That's crazy. Did you spend less when you had a job? working for somebody else your whole life every time we had a major market event? No, because you had a job, you had a paycheck. You need to make sure you have a paycheck that doesn't go down or go up during different market conditions. It's irrelevant what the market condition is. You have to build a plan that can man you can manage your income and pull it from another source during times of market volatility to manage that sequence of returns risk. Paul, this is a big part of the class, sequence of returns risk and managing income. So again, this is why the class is eight hours. These plans that we're going to teach you take us in our private practice 50 to 80 hours to build for our individual clients. We're like a family office. And what we're trying to teach you is what the family office, high net worth families have access to. We're teaching it to you in the class. So just sign up for one of these classes. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we will return more with Kirk and Paul on the other side of the break. Happy you're with us today on the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak here with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. Kirk and Paul, they are financial instructors, and you have a chance to meet them and other instructors from the Retirement Education Foundation. When you get registered for the foundation's courses, these are like master's level courses on retirement planning. If you're heading into retirement, maybe you're recently retired, you cannot miss these courses. If you want a successful retirement, you want your money to last, you want to see how big taxes could be in your retirement from a risk perspective, we want you there. We want you to get a front row seat. Here's how you do it. Go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. And if you're listening today from Missouri, keep in mind that these courses, they are held at the University of Missouri and Columbia College. 
in Michigan. They're held at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both campuses, Troy and Novi, or Oakland University. And I should mention, if getting to any of those locations that I mentioned, if that's an issue for you and you'd rather listen from the comfort of your own home, you can do that. All of these courses are streamed live, so keep that in mind as well. And we want you to attend. These courses do fill up quickly, as you can imagine, so please get registered today. We're going to get back into our program today, how to interview and find the right financial advisor for your retirement, for retirement success. And we're going to dive back in here. I want to remind you that you can also re-listen to this show or several other of our shows by finding it wherever you find your favorite podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the program when you're there. Search for Retirement Education Hour. All right, Kirk, Paul, let's talk about income. Earlier in the program, you were talking about sequence of return risk. What else on the income front do we need to be aware of as we're interviewing these financial advisors? So the question that we would ask is, so let me rephrase this. The question, another question we think you should be asking your advisors around income is, how much can I afford to spend? So they're going to ask you, what do you need in retirement? What do you need to spend? What do you need to pay your bills in retirement? You notice it's what do you need, not what do you want? So they're going to give you whatever you say you need. You could have three, four, five million dollars. If you say, I need $100,000 a year, they'll say, yeah, you can afford that. The probability is you won't outlive your money. You can take your 5%. Well, if you got $3 million and you're 65 years old, you can really have over $200,000 a year. That's what you can have if someone effectively builds you a retirement plan. Someone who really specializes in just retirement planning that can help you manage sequence of returns risk, manage your income planning. You should be able to take six, seven, eight percent withdrawal rates in your 60s, even as early as your early 60s, if you are spending the 50 hours to build an effective retirement plan so that you have pivot accounts and different levers to pull during different market conditions, not changing your investments, but changing where you pull your income from. And I know next segment, we're going to talk about taxes. That's another way that allows you to take a greater percentage per year out of your income without outliving your, your money. Paul, income planning is the key. And the default, the cookie cutter, one size fits all is take your three to 4% a year and you'll be fine and protect your principal. The question is how much can I have? And if they're not telling you six, seven, eight percent, then you don't have the right person. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I think it's all about who's doing the work, who's doing the heavy lifting, who is going to be responsible for this plan. And I think it's fair to say the if you're interviewing an advisor and he's saying to you, you could take 3% out and never outlive your money, they're shifting their responsibility to you. They don't want to do the hard work. They want you to do the work. They want you to modify your life when the market's down. They want you to limit your spending. They want you to do the work rather than them, they do the work. Because if they did the work, there's no reason why you should only be spending 3% of your money. But it really is about who takes responsibility. and. And, and often they're shifting it to you. And that's why that's an important interview question. Most people, Kirk, I, 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 at least lately, most people we're meeting in the class, you know, we meet some people that legacy is important, right? There, there are some of you that want to leave a lot of money to kids, fine, or charity, fine. Many people just want to, they want to spend the last dime. They want to, they want the most income they can get while they're healthy. And there's no reason that when you're interviewing your advisor, they, they shouldn't be able to do that for you. But that requires them doing a lot of work. And, and that's the question. That's where, you know, that's, that's the challenge. So, so I want to be clear. Like, you know, so, so Paul, you nailed that. Who's doing the work? And you, you're 100% right. So I, I want to be careful. There was one thing you said, and, and I know what you meant, but I want to make sure people understand this. Because the other side of this coin is people will go to the extreme. We're not spending all your dollar. You, you can't spend all your money down to nothing, right? I mean, there there are limits here. That's why the magic number is usually if someone really is is a retirement planner who is really spending the fifty hours plus to run all the iterations and building all the different accounts, pivot accounts we call them, and have all the different levers to pull that we teach you in the class. I mean, 
or you can go to the website and look at the sample plan. You're going to see all the different levers and accounts that are set up for different market conditions. You should be able to take six, seven, eight percent withdrawal rates with no chance of outliving your income if someone is effectively doing it right. But they have to do the planning. And so if their focus is talking to you about their portfolios or the investments, that that is not that is the easiest part, literally the easiest part of what we do in our private practice. And we're responsible for over two billion dollars. We operate like a family office with our CPA attorneys and our wealth managers all building plans, right? So the easiest thing that we do is the investing. That is by far the easiest part of retirement planning is the investing part of it. Sincerely, it is the most difficult part is the income planning and how do we maximize someone's income plan to make sure that there's no chance they can outlive their money, to protect them from long-term care, but give them the freedom to spend more money when they're healthier, when they're younger, so they're and, and, and eliminate that fear and anxiety that something bad's going to happen. That's it, it. Starts, Paul. It all starts. Look, ev- all of this starts with understanding what is even possible for a retirement plan, and none of you know this. And so, just do yourself a favor and go to one of the local universities in your areas and sco- attend one of these eight-hour courses that the charity is hosting. It's a charity hosting an educational event to show you how to maximize your retirement. It, what do you, what, it's your money. It's your retirement. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. Register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return. There's plenty more with Kirk and Ball right after this. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, and thanks for tuning in. Megan Mozak alongside financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. We want to give you a chance to meet Kirk, Paul, the other financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation at the Foundation's courses. And I've mentioned these are really deep dives into all things retirement planning. We've described them as being almost like a master's level course. And we say that because so much has changed in the world of retirement planning. We've seen this evolution and there is a lot to know. You are required to know a lot in order to have a successful 21st century retirement. And we want to give you a leg up. We want to give you the greatest advantage towards success. And that's why the foundation has been holding these courses at major colleges and universities. Wherever you're listening today, there is a location you can attend, and we want you there. This is how you register. Go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also pick up your phone and call to register, 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. As we always say, do something today. Your future self is going to thank you for this is one of those things. So take action now and keep in mind, if you're in Missouri today listening, these courses are held at the University of Missouri and Columbia College. In the state of Michigan, you can attend at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both campuses, Troy and Novi, and Oakland University. So register today. Also, this program, and boy, has this been a great show. You can go back and listen. You can share it with your husband, your wife, a friend. Search for it wherever you find your favorite podcasts. All you have to do is search for the name of the show, which is the Retirement Education Hour. Kirk and Paul, I've learned a lot today how to interview for the right financial advisor for this stage of life, which is, of course, going into retirement. There's a lot to ask. And there's a huge question out there around taxes. How do you find out if you're working with the right person as it relates to taxes in retirement? So, Megan, in traditional fashion, you know my style is always to tell you what people are going to say and why that isn't the right answer and what they should be saying if you found the right person. So tax planning is the new buzz because people, sorry, we are all sort of irrational around the amount of taxes we pay and how to not pay taxes. That's everyone. And so the financial service industry, understanding human behavior, The consumer's behavior around their money knows that the easiest way to get your attention is to talk about taxes. So everyone's talking about taxes. 
So the taxes they're talking about is they're going to look and do a quick analysis and say, over the next couple of years, should we be Roth converting or shouldn't we be Roth? Let's fill a bracket and don't bump brackets. They're all ha doing like just small tidbits of tax plan, just a little bit, enough to grab your attention. They're not doing the real planning, which we'll get to in a minute. The other thing they're going to talk about is tax efficient investing, and that's a given. Like not owning actively managed, actively traded mutual funds in a taxable account, a non-IRA account or non-401k account, that's a given. Like uh, if you're high net worth direct indexing so you can ha tax loss harvest, that's a given. Those are like basics. That's standard stuff. But everyone's talking about it like it's, it's something new. Anyone competent should be doing those things. If you find the right person for retirement, the right financial advisor, that's why in our private practice or the plan we teach in the class took 50 to 80 hours to build. We are literally running hundreds of iterations, modeling, taking income from different accounts at different ages, taking Social Security at different account times, taking your IRA money and 401k, Roth converting, how much to Roth convert, when to Roth convert. The bottom line, the, question, the answer is driven by how much taxes will I spend over the next, have to pay over the next 25 years if I do no planning. And then now I know what the problem is, that total tax bill, how do I make it the most efficient over the next 25 years? That is not easy. That is going to take somebody 50 plus hours to do it. And I'm not exaggerating. They are, there's no software to do this. This is literally because there's you, you change one lever in, in income taxes, it impacts four others. It's a domino effect. So it takes a lot of work, Paul. And so you really got to be specific when you're asking this question. Yeah. In fact, I think, I think this, this, this question that, that we're encouraging people to ask their advisors, which is really about what, what strategies do the advisor employ to, to help reduce taxes in the future? I think this is tied to the next segment, which is planning. I, it's going to be very hard to ask this question without asking another, the follow-up question, which is show me an, an example of a plan, because I think it's going to be hard for people to ask this and really get an answer they understand. But if the advisor is willing to show you an example of a plan and an example of their tax strategy, you'll be able to see whether, Kirk, they're talking about the things you just talked about, which is sort of the low-hanging fruit, or really doing significant tax planning that ultimately will reduce your taxes in the future, will reduce your RMDs in the future, will reduce how much of your Social Security is taxable in the future. To, to really ask this question, you really ultimately have to see an example of a plan, and, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Paul, it's funny. Don't let, and this is a little off topic, but don't let anyone sell you any investment strategy, annuity, or tell you when you should be taking Social Security or anything, they shouldn't, first you build a plan. It's like buying furniture for a house you haven't built yet. The house that you're building is your retirement plan and how to furnish that or what you should do, what strategy should I take my lump sum or a pension are all driven by the plan. And taxes is such a big component. Guys, in our class, we show examples of taking just normal income, what you have saved um, in different sequences of events, meaning taking money from an IRA, from a Roth, from a taxable account, from a savings account, from a pension, so Social Security, just changing with all earning the same return. Everyone's getting the same return in every sample we're showing. And the difference is 13 years by doing proper planning, mapping out taxes is how much longer your money will last. Because it's hundreds of thousands of dollars of tax savings letting your money last longer. Taxes is a big... By the way, if they say to you, we don't do tax planning, then you know you're not with the right team. They're, they can't do retirement planning if they don't have CPAs on their team mapping out when and how you should be taking your income for 25 years. It should be mapped out in advance. And then what if someone dies, if your spouse dies from a tax perspective? There's... Just attend one of our eight-hour class. Do yourself a favor. It's going to change your retirement 100%. So attend one of the eight-hour classes. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. You just have to make a $29 donation to charity. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back. Plenty more with Kirk and Paul after this. 
Glad you've tuned in to the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak. It's great to be here with financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. Kirk and Paul, they're with the Retirement Education Foundation, and we've been telling you about the foundation's courses on retirement planning. If you're feeling a little uneasy in this area and you know that there is more to wrap your brain around, well, you're probably right, and this is a great chance to do it. If you're newly retired, please make plans to attend. We want you to have a great retirement. It starts with knowledge. It starts with education, and this is a terrific place to do that. Register for the Foundation's courses. These are one-day courses or two-day courses, your choice. They're held at major colleges and universities in your community. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. The phone number to register, 800-240-8981. In the state of Missouri, you can attend at the University of Missouri or Columbia College. In Michigan, these courses are held at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi or Troy Campus, or Oakland University. You also have the option to view these remotely. You can watch from the comfort of your own home. All of these courses are streamed live. And one note on Missouri, have to say this, the Retirement Education Foundation, they are a proud partner of Mizzou Athletics. Now, Kirk and Paul, I want to get back to our program here. We've been talking about how to interview your financial advisor, how to find the right advisor for this stage in life, retirement. I want to make sure that all of our listeners know you can re-listen to this program and so many others in our library. Find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. Let's talk about the importance, Kirk and Paul, of asking a potential financial advisor for a sample, a sample of a plan they would put together. Is that something you recommend? Yes. In fact, they can see what a real sample plan uh, looks like on the charity's website. We take a plan from an existing client in our pri- one of our private practices, and we walk through, we spend a 30, 40 minutes walking through what a retirement plan should look like. And so after viewing that, if you go to the charity's website and watch a webinar or come to the class, you will then understand what you should be looking for in a plan. That's the goal of it. We want you to be armed with enough information to understand if the advisor you're interviewing is really capable or willing or even provides this type of planning. So, you know, one of the things we didn't cover today, and I want to I want to talk about planning. It's really important, but I want to make sure to, the basic is to make sure are they qualified to do this planning. So credentials are really critical. So Something people tend to do in the financial service industry is they may be predominantly focused on selling annuities and insurance. They may only be insurance licensed, or they may even have a securities license, but the predominant majority of what they do, the greatest percentage of what they sell and provide is insurance-based annuities. That would be a red flag, right? If someone doesn't have a CPA on their team helping them to build a retirement plan, they're not going to be doing taxes then. They're not licensed to do taxes. So that would be a red flag. Someone with a a team with a CFP is great. It's not a mandatory, but it does suggest that they have a little more advanced knowledge, even though I I will tell you, we have CFPs that are approaching retirement that attend our retirement courses to help them understand how to build a retirement plan. Just because they have a CFP doesn't mean they're qualified or able to do this, but it does suggest that they are more advanced in their ability to do planning doesn't mean they're actually doing real planning. Right. So, but the credentials are important. We talk a lot more about that in the class. They got to be a fiduciary, right? You have to make sure they're a fiduciary and a fiduciary only. That's one of the things we cover in the class. So you can do background checks and you'll know are they commission based? Are they fee based? How do they get paid? These are things that we explore in the class, along with Paul showing them really what a plan is, right? Yeah, no, exactly. And I think of someone recently I, I met. And I know I always go talk about people I meet, but I'm, I got to say, I met someone in the class recently and they showed me what their advisor, an example what their advisor did for planning. And I don't want to explain, it was ridiculous, but the one thing they did, this person said they wanted to retire next year. So do you know what kind of withdrawal rate they used to make it look they could, like they could retire next year? What? 10%. Are you kidding me? 10%. And I said to them, and here's their bottom line, Why? because they didn't want to give this person bad news. At the end of the day, right, Kirk, part of our job as advisors, if, if you're an advisor, you got to be honest. 
You, sometimes you have to deliver bad news. This, this person can't retire next year. And it's not easy to tell someone you can't retire. But you have an obligation to be honest. And this advisor didn't want to be honest. So what they did is they made it look like they could retire but they, by using a growth rate that was completely unrealistic, right? So people can show you plans. You also need to know what not to accept. And you got to be realistic about those growth rates. That is completely un unnecessary and impossible. Paul, that, that's infuriating. And so one of two things is true there. They didn't want to give them bad news or they just wanted to sell them stuff. And either one is inexcusable and it's really, really frustrating. Look, that's the knowledge you'll be armed with from this class because you will understand all the levers that should be in a plan, what a retirement plan should look like and what, what is potentially available to you based upon your age. We go through this and we say there are ways to be able to withdraw this, but growth rates, it shouldn't be driven by growth rates of investments because if you're going to focus on growth rates, all you can take out is three or 4%. That's why in the sample plan, we're only showing, intentionally only showing a 3% growth rate. Does that mean that's all we're trying to get? No, <laughs> we will do better than that. We're proving that based upon a, about a 3% projected growth rate through a retirement, you can still, still take, in this example, 8% withdrawal rates. All of you could still take 6, 7, 8% withdrawal rates if you're managing your income and eliminating sequence of returns risk. See, it's not just turn up the growth rate volume to justify a higher withdrawal rate. That's not what's going to drive this. It's not the growth rate. It's managing your income during the inevitable four to seven major market events that you're going to experience through a retirement. Attend one of these eight-hour classes. It'll change your retirement, I promise. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. Go to retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Retirement Education Foundation is a fiscally sponsored program of United Charitable, a registered 501c3 public charity. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is paid for by the Retirement Education Foundation.